um, to our daily workout. Steve, do you have any announcements that you want to kick us off with? No, go ahead, jump into it. All right. So um, this week we were doing a mix of things. So Monday, Tuesday, we went really cardio intensive. Yesterday we went strength based. Today we're going to function a little bit more on both mobility and general bodily control, uh, everything centering from the core. So it's going to be a little bit slower paced workout, even slower than yesterday, um, but we're still going to get a fantastic burn. And for some, it might actually be harder than a lot of the stuff we've done before. Um, so pop the bands on, get the cycles going, water close by, everyone's like, oh gosh, what are we going to do? Um, let's start on hands and knees. So come on down. And we've done a cat cow before. This time you're going to come down onto your forearms and focus on a cow cow for the lumbar region of your spine. So we have the lower region of our spine. And I want you just to think about tucking and untucking your tailbone. So this movement really comes from the hips. You're gonna pull the navel in, press the spine towards the ceiling, and then press your tailbone up towards the ceiling, drop the belly down. And it's a smaller range of motion than when we're on our hands, and that's what we want. So as you're going through this, squeezing out as much range as you can, targeting the lower back. And if you like to add breath, it's an inhale to lift your tailbone, untuck. Exhale, tuck it under, pull the belly button in. As you inhale, untuck, drop the navel. Exhale, rounding under. And take a couple more here. All right. Now, still working into the spine, but on our arms, because we got our armbands on, I want you to take your left hand behind your head, and then go ahead and extend your right leg back behind you. So already, we're starting to kick in some core work, some balance here. Now, that right arm stays nice and straight and strong. Now, work with me here. Take left elbow to right knee underneath the body. And then as you extend that leg out, lift your left elbow up, spinal rotation. So you can take a gaze. We bring elbow to knee underneath the body. And then we lengthen everything out as you lift your left elbow, squaring off the shoulders. So let's go ahead and do 30 seconds that same side. Being patient with ourselves, this does require a good amount of core strength and balance. So we're going to go elbow to knee. Lengthen out, open up, pull it all in, find that contact, lengthen out, open up. Good. And I'm going to say this a bunch today. The secret to the moves today are they should all come to some degree from your core. Last 10 seconds. See if you can do one or two more. Making sure we breathe. And go ahead and rest. And let's go ahead and switch sides. This time we're gonna take the right hand to the back of the head, extend your left leg back behind you, find balance, find stability to start. And then start to bring elbow to knee underneath the body. As you extend the leg back, lift the right elbow up, spinal twist. If you like to add breath, inhale, pull it in. Exhale, lengthen out to rotate. And we've got our 30 seconds here, moving through it. And the slower you can go, the more you can really open up your spine and start to control that core, getting all the different muscles of the body working. Nice. Good. Last 10. Looks good, guys. This time, keep that left arm nice and straight and strong. Don't let the elbow bend. And go ahead and bring both hands, bring the knees down. Give the hips a rock side to side. And then come on up to stand for our forearm exercises. So we're gonna keep the arms straight down by our sides and we're gonna do straight arm wrist curls. So I don't want any part from your shoulder to your wrist to move. You're isolating, you're lifting up, 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 squeezing the fist. So we're gonna do 30 seconds. First set, arms are down by the sides and we're going. We lift, 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 
and lift. And I'm not as concerned about the time as I am about making sure that your arms stay in place and you're squeezing your fists the whole time. Lift, lift, lift. I lost my cycle. Last 10. Good. We have five, four, growing taller. Three, two, and rest. Shake it out. And one more set. Glue the arms down by your sides. Make fists. This time, flip the palms, the fist face down towards the floor, little reverse curl, up, up. So you're leading with the top part of your hand. Here we go, up, up, up. Little less range of motion, but we're still getting into the forearm. Squeeze, squeeze. Really pull those thumbs in. Yeah, half done. Up, up, up. Feel those muscles work, starting to look down. Maybe see those veins coming out. Arms might be getting slightly darker in color. That's totally cool. We have five, four, three, two, and rest. Give the fingers a wiggle. Let's check cap refill as a team. Press on the base of one of your palms. Turns from right, white, should go back to normal color within about three seconds. If that's happening, we're good to go. So the next two exercises we're very familiar with. We have tricep extensions and bicep curls. So I'm on my knees just so you guys can see me. Feel free to stay standing. You can come down if you really want to. Elbows tucked in towards the side of the body. Slight hinge in the hips. As we extend back, we lengthen out. Pinky finger reaches up. Pull it in. Lengthen out. Pull it in. 30 seconds. We've got the move. Right into it. Out. In. Out. In. I like it. Good. And the reason we hinge forward is because we're able to extend our arms back even further when we get a little bend into our hips. We have more space to move, more muscle activation. Now, check your core. Is it supporting you or is it allowing you to sag into the shoulders, the back? So draw the belly button in even more. Good. We're going to hold and pulse in five, four, three, two. Extend out, little less with the pinky finger. Leading up, draw your shoulders down and back. We have ten. Nine, eight, seven, core, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good job. Woo. All right. One more set. Elbows in. Little hinge at the hips. Drop your chest down. No slouching. 30 seconds. See if you can go fast. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. That's the stuff. Check to make sure your shoulders aren't hunching up by your ears. Pull them down. Pull that navel in. Maybe hinge even further at the hips so you can get more range of motion. Out, in, out, in. Awesome work. Keep going. Fast. 10 seconds. Woo, I see someone doing hard work. Let me see who that is. We have eight, seven. Go DS. Six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Shake it out. Tricep stretch. Right hand over to left shoulder. Take your left hand, gently encourage it back. And let's switch sides. Left hand over to right shoulder, press it back. And the arm exercises are pretty familiar things. It's more the legs that we're gonna get into the bodily control. But I see straight spines flat back. So that means we're all engaging our core, which is exactly what I wanna see. So good job, everyone. Go ahead and release it. Last up. Not last step. This is not the last exercise. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just excited because I want to keep going. Elbows in, bicep curl. In, out, in, out. Slow pace to start. 30 seconds. No part of your arm between your shoulder and your elbow moves. It's just that forearm. Squeeze. If you have light weights, you can grab them, but there is no need for that here. I want you to pull your elbows in towards your body as much as you can as you're doing it. Contract the biceps. In, out, in, out and you can feel that difference really punching up fist towards shoulders as you get up to the top. Yes. Good. Last 10. Really squeeze at the top. We have seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Clasp your hands behind your back. Bicep stretch. All right. Last set. Release it. I don't know about you all, but I'm feeling my arms pumping. They're working. Numbness, not cool. Little bit of tingling, that's fine, okay? Elbows in, squeeze them in, make those fists. Fast pace, 30 seconds. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. What is your core doing? Is it supporting you or is it allowing your body to slap? 
slouch. Nice, Kayleen. Good, Bonnie. All right. Everyone looks great. I'm sorry, I'm horrible at name pronunciation, but I'm seeing someone named, it looks like Abasi. I'm sorry if it's wrong. It looks great. Last 10. <laughs> Good, we have five, four, three, two, and rest. Okay, now let's take it down to hands and knees. We always do some kind of plank variation in our workout. Today's plank is extra special because we're working our plank, but we're also working our shoulder mobility. So how well does our arm work in our shoulder socket? So in a plank position, we're gonna take alternating arm circles. So I go all the way around and back, set my hand down and switch sides. So now we're starting to get into body control. My body does not move as I make those circles. Totally fine to do these on the knees, but I want you to focus more on how big you can get that circle instead of just going for speed and flipping our limbs around, okay? So we're doing our two 30 second sets. There's really not much difference between the first and the second. Lower is better, so make your way into plank. First set, let's move through it. And the nice thing about doing these is because we only have one limb on the ground, our obliques, the sides of our abs have to work extra hard to keep our body from shifting and moving. Good, work through that range. 10 more seconds. Cool. Nice. Good, we're gonna drop the knees in five. Nice, Quentin. Four, three, two, and rest. Everybody walk your arms forward, shoulder stretch. I don't want your elbows to touch the floor. So walk the fingers forward so much that you've got space and then drop your chest down towards the floor. Two big breaths. All right, walk your arms back up towards the body. Second set, make your way into plank, 30 seconds, circle it out. If you're needing an extra level of challenge today, lift alternating leg as you do it, but I don't wanna see you compromising those circles. Third one. Good. Everyone's moving slow and I love it. Diane, those are beautiful. All right, John, you've got Jeff. We're swimming backstroke in plank position, last 10. Make sure those hips aren't rocking. I'm seeing a little bit of it, but we're doing good. We're gonna drop the knees in five, four, three, two, and one. Everyone make your way down onto your right side. Are we taking a rest? Not really. Take your bottom hand behind your head. That's for support. Top hand roots into the mat. This is our last upper body exercise. Then we're gonna do a heart rate boost and we're gonna switch it out. So we press that top hand into the floor and you press yourself up as high as you can. Now this might vary on a person to person basis and that's okay. Do your best, 30 seconds. We press up as high as we can and back down. We press up and back down. Good. Woo. All right, there we go. Nice. Pushing the floor away from you with that bottom hand. Even if you just get up an inch, your arm is still working and your obliques are working. Last 10, see if you can get all the way up. Why not? Challenge yourself. We have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Make your way over onto your left side. Take the hand behind the head for stability. Press your top hand into the floor. I'll wait one second while we all get set up. And we wanna make sure that our hips stay stacked here. So we don't wanna flop back onto our back. So keep that nice alignment, second 30 seconds. Press into the top hand, come up, and all the way back down. And you might notice a little bit more strength in one side than the other, seeing that we are typically right hand or left handed. Sometimes there is some imbalance there. In fact, oftentimes there's some imbalance there. So just observe it, press up as much as you can, keep working through it, 10 more seconds. Nice, good. See if you can do one more. We have five, four, three, two, Rest, everyone come up to stand. 
Our three heart rate pumping moves of the day are a squat to overhead rotation. I take my hands. I squat down, reach, down, reach, half and half. Then we do the other side, up. As you reach, see if you can come onto the toes of the opposite foot. So I come down, up, down, up. That's first 30 seconds. Second 30 seconds, Skaters, we're going side to side. You can jump or you can just tap, okay? Last 30 seconds, elbow to knee, toe touch. So getting back into that spine, we go tap, 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 tap. Totally cool to add some spring in your steps or not, okay? So first 30 seconds, squat to overhead reach. Let's go, down, up down, up. See how fast you're comfortable with going to get your heart rate boosted. That's the point of what we're doing right here. Down, up. Yeah, there we go. We're pressing our hips back. No rounding out the spine. We're going to switch sides in four, three, two, and one. Other side. Down, up, down, up. Woo, there we go. Arms are working, legs are working. Last 10. There we go. See if you can go even lower for five, four, three, two, and one. Ice skaters, 30 seconds, side to side. I don't care if your hand touches the floor. I want you to try and move fast. Reach, reach, and reach. Totally okay just to tap it over. There we go. Speed skating, even faster. If you feel comfortable getting low, now you can get low, but please do not let it compromise your form. We have five, four, three, two. Elbow to knee, toe tap. Elbow to knee, toe tap. You can add the hop, or you can just take it nice and slow. There's always at least one move in the cardio portion that looks like some kind of bizarre dance. And I'd say this is it for today. Tap. Last 10. In five, we're gonna take a break and get some water. We have four, three, two, and one. Good job, everyone. Grab your water, switch out your band. We're gonna make our way over to our legs where we're gonna do what I call playing because we're challenging our bodies in different ways. Steve, I'll hand it over to you for a second. And if anyone has any questions, give us a shout right now. Nope, you're doing quite well. <laughs> Everyone's doing quite well. So while we're switching on our bands, I'm gonna talk about something, a concept that I really have been interested in in the last, uh, say year and a half, called functional mobility. And to some of you, this might be a really familiar term. You've heard of it, you know all about it. Uh, and for others, this might be new. Um, but in studying and working with functional mobility, there's the two portions, functional. So how do our movements support the things we do in our daily lives? And that can mean anything from spinal twisting, whether you're a skier, a golf player, or whether you just reach across in the morning and grab your coffee. So what are we doing that enables us to move more smoothly and with more ease? And then the mobility portion is how well can we control our body as we work through a range of motion in our joints? For example, those circles we did in plank, are we able to get our arms all the way up and around or does our elbow start to bend? And so what we're gonna do a lot of in our lower body portion today is called functional mobility. We're building up mobility, control, stability in our bodies and able to support us in things we tend to do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether we are actively thinking about it or not. So with that being said, we're gonna start with a stretch. If you have knee injuries, please be very careful with this, or you can do everything that we're doing in a wide-legged sit. So when we're pulsing and hinging in the frog position, you can do this. Otherwise, we're gonna make our way onto hands and knees. And I want you to take your knees wider than your hips. Okay, and then you're going to angle your toes out towards the side walls or fence, whatever you are. 
and then check your heels. Make sure that your heels are in line with your knees. So sometimes the heels tend to sneak together. Make sure you got a nice line. And once you're here, keeping your wrists under shoulders, we're going to start to march. You're going to lift your right leg off the floor and set it down. And I want you to keep the knees down. So we're just rotating. Set it down. Right leg or heel, left heel up. And we're going to keep going side to side. In frog. All right. Now pick your right foot up, hold it. Pick your left foot up and hold it and keep lifting your heels as high as you can. We have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great. Now, if you can, come down onto your forearms. Okay? Once you're here, scoot your butt back towards your heels. Ooh, we start to feel that stretch. Now let's march again. Pick your right foot up. Set it down. Pick your left foot up. Set it down. Let's march it out. We have six, five, get as high as you can, four, three, two, and one. Now, both feet off the floor. Pick them up. Get them as high as you can. Keep pressing your butt back towards your heels. We have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, drop your feet, stay where you are, press your butt back even more, and then rock a little bit forwards, a little bit backwards. Each time you press your tailbone back, see if you can get it even closer to your heel. We've got 10 more seconds here, and then we're going to come out of it. Try and relax into somewhere in the body, maybe the shoulders, the fingers, and let the legs, the hips, the inner thighs open up. And gentlemen, I'm sorry, this is typically an especially tight place for you. Good. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Now let's come out of it together. Make your way back onto your hands. Scoot your knees together and then rock the hips side to side. Okay. Now we're ready to start with some of our work. So come on up to stand. Now that we've taken a stretch, gotten a bit of mobility work in to kind of undo some of the tightness we might be experiencing from the last couple days of work, we're going to work into our calf exercises, our heel lift. So today, what I'd like us to try and do is pedal. So a pedal can look like this, one at a time. Or if you're up for more of a challenge, don't let your heels touch the floor. So you're going to pedal it up with your heels up the whole time. So we're doing our two 30-second sets. You can pick which level works best for you. And let's go ahead and start now. So I'm going to do it with my heels lifted. Now our secret weapon today is our core. And I'd also encourage engaging your glutes. So how can we work these powerhouses to enable us to get even deeper into our calf work? Pedal it out. And speed doesn't really matter here. Think more control. Yes. Last 10. Woo! Good. We have five, four, three, two, and rest. Go ahead and shift the weight from Heels to toes, heels to toes. And let's come up for our second set. So you can either alternate or pick those heels up. Last one, pedal it out. That's the stuff. Good, making sure you're not rounding or swaying in the back. Half done. Maybe now you can go a little bit faster that we're comfortable with the move. But if this means that your heels hit the floor, slow it down. Control is what we're working with today. Last 10. We have five, four, three, two, and rest. Let's take a quick calf stretch. Everyone step your right foot back. Keep your heel rooted down towards the floor. Your heel's going to so badly want to sneak up. Don't let it. And then bend into the left knee and keep pressing that back heel down. Sorry, bend it. Yeah, bend into the left knee. And to get deeper into that stretch, you can rotate the toes to face forward. To ease up on it a little bit, you can angle the foot out to the side. All right, let's switch it out. Step the right foot forward, glue the left heel down to the mat, and then bend into that knee as much as you can, pressing that back leg straight. And release. So next up, we have a Cossack 
squat, which we've done before. And then a step my feet nice and wide. And the degree to how low you go just depends on your own personal mobility. So one example of a Cossack squat would be I bend into one leg and I come back up. I bend into the other side and I come back up. Important things to notice here. My knees do not go past my toes. So I'm not shifting my weight forward. I'm pressing my butt back. Now, another variation of this, depending on where your body's at, is I go all the way down, come back up, and switch sides. And notice my heels stay rooted into the floor the whole time. So whatever variation you're in, knees don't shift forward, heels don't lift up. Let's play with it. 30 seconds. Challenge yourself. Take your time, get as low as you can, and then press into the heel. Whatever side you're bending into, you want to press into the heel to come back up through center. See how low you can go. Worst case scenario, you stumble a little bit, you jump back into it, side to side. And we want to try and keep that alternate leg nice and straight. There we go. Butts back, heels down. Nice. These look great. We've got 10 more seconds. Good, Jeff. George has his hands up. My goodness, that's amazing. I like it. Last five, four, three, two. Shake it out. All right. Well, George got me with the spoil alert here. For our second set, you can either have hands on hips, hands together, or if you want more of a challenge, you can take your hands behind your head or reach your arms straight up. But if you choose the latter two options, making sure that because we do this, we don't start to slouch forward and round out. So pick your position, second set, 30 seconds. We're going. And as you do this, you might notice some little pops or cracks in your hips. I always get those, as long as they're not painful, that's just the body releasing air is typically okay. Good, work through it, side to side, nice. If you have your hands behind your head, keep pressing your elbows back. If you have your arms straight up, really reach them up. Take the bend out of your elbows. Nice, Diane. Good. Sydney and Sophia look great. All right, Gabe. Lily's looking good. Last five. Four, three, two. Good job. Shake it out. All right. Let's get that heart rate up with our leg band. First 30 seconds, squat to overhead reach. Step your feet slightly wider than the hips distance. We're going over to the side. We squat, reach, squat, reach. Let's get that heart rate back up. Take that pace. Imagine you're holding a ball, drop it down, throw it up, drop it down, throw it up. In four, we're gonna switch five, three. Two and one, switch it over. Down, up, down, up. Yes, use that force. Last seven, six, five, four, three, two, and skaters, side to side. Good, you can step or you can hop. All right. Good. Nice, Cassiopeia. Good job, Finn. You're flying. In five, we're going to go into elbow to knee, toe touch. We have four, three, two. Elbow to knee, toe touch. Elbow to knee, and switch. Option to pick up the pace. Go. Woo. Now we're moving. Ideally, we're sweating, and we're going to take a big sip of water after this set. Last 10. We have four, three, two, and one. Everybody grab your water. Group cheers. And I'm going to demonstrate our next exercise while we take a quick pause. So coming back down on the hands and knees, this is called 
for lack of better, more scientific term, one arm, one leg. So I'm coming into my bear position. My knees are hovered off the floor. I extend my right leg back. As soon as my foot touches the floor, my left arm reaches forward. Back, forward. Now notice my hips and my spine don't move. Your thighs will be burning before you know it. And I want you to really reach that arm forward, get it in line with the ears so we're getting into our shoulders. An alternative for that is stay on your knees. Right leg back, left arm forward. Right leg back, left arm forward. Okay, so you can pick whether you want that hovered bear position or you wanna keep your knees down. Either way, we're moving and I like it. Okay, so we're gonna start only the right leg and the left arm, think a pendulum. Set yourself up, first 30 seconds, let's go. Try and keep the movement as smooth and as slow as possible. Focusing on your core, focusing on that flat back. All right. Looks good, it looks great. Last five, four, three, two, and rest. Good job, everyone. Quick quad stretch, press your butt back to your heels, and then shift it forward. One more time, butt back, shift it forward, and let's move right to the other side. Tuck your toes if you choose that route, come on up. This time, left leg back, right arm forward. Left leg back, right arm forward. And we're actually gonna do two sets of these. And I'm curious whether it's harder on the arms or harder on your quads. I find that it's harder on my quads, but everyone has a different experience. Regardless, arms and legs, everything is working. And I see someone, I see a dog popping in. <laughs> Good. If you're hovering your knees, make sure your knees are just one inch off the floor. Don't get too crazy. We don't want to pike our butts up. We have five, four, keep going, Kayleen, three, two, and rest. Circle your hips one direction. Move them around the other way. And then come back through center. Now. If you wanna do something different, you can come up into plank. We lift, 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 lift. But I will say that I think bear is actually harder. So let's actually stay in bear. I'm calling it on that one, okay? If you're either on your knees or you're in bear, because we wanna work our legs. So we want the legs underneath our band. So everyone, again, we're gonna go right leg, left arm, 30 seconds. Let's go. Good. Trying to keep those arms nice and straight as we reach them forward. So we can get into the shoulder. Go, Chris, go! Yeah! All right. Last four, three, two, and rest, quad stretch. Press your butt back to your heel. If you can, start to walk your hands back behind you and press your butt off your heels. Keep pushing your knees towards each other to protect the knees. All right, last set. Back onto hands and knees, tuck your toes, right leg, left arm, or maybe we have the other side. Whichever side you didn't do last time. 30 seconds, last one. Then we're gonna get our heart rate up. And then we have our last leg exercise. Adam, I can't see you, but I know you're doing awesome. <laughs> nice, Cassiopeia, look good. Cool. Last seven, six, five, four, three, two. Hop on up. Give the legs a shake out. All right. Last heart rate boost of the day. Squat to overhead reach, 30 seconds. Down, up, down, 
up. Imagine you're holding a ball between your hands. Toss up, throw it down. Switch sides, down, up, down, up. Yes. Butt back, weight is always in the heel. Last seven, six, five, four, three, two. Ice skaters, go. Light on those toes. If you have the ability in your body to get lower, you can get lower now, but no rounding on the back. I'd rather you move back and get your heart rate up. We have 10. In five, we're gonna do elbow to knee, toe taps. We have four, three, two, and one. Hands behind the head. Let me see you add a jump in here and go. Light on the toes, pick it up. Last 10, go, let's move. We have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Water for everybody, take a step. Okay, this is my favorite exercise of the day personally. Because it's just so weird and so hard. Okay, it's called stand to sit. So I do this. I'm actually going to face this direction so you can see. I pick one leg off the floor. I sit down as low as I possibly can and switch it out, come up to stand. So I don't expect you to go that low. You pick one foot up, sit down as low as you possibly can, Swap it out, rise on out. Okay, so this one takes a lot of patience. Even if your seat looks like this, that's fine. You're working your quads, you're working your hamstrings, you're challenging your balance. Maybe with time, you can start to get your butt lower and lower. It's really hard. So let's do it, okay? Feet underneath hips, pick your left leg up. Start to drop your butt low, get as low as you possibly can. Press the left foot into the floor, right foot up and rise. And then switch sides. <laughs> Woo! Everyone is moving at a perfect pace. I see the focus and it looks great. Awesome. Good. Last 10. Sitting and feel eyes look great. We have five, four, three, two. Come on up. Take hands to shoulders. Release those hamstrings. That's a lot. Five. Good morning. All right. Now, second set. We're gonna start with the right leg lifted. Come down into your seat, get as low as you can. I'm gonna start my timer, swap it out, rise on up. And as you're doing this, try not to let yourself flop. Keep the core engaged, keep your chest up. Nice. Instagram is firing, Zoom is firing. Good. Last 10. Get those butts even lower. Woo, good Lily. We have five, four, three, two, and rest. Good old fashioned hamstring stretch. Bend your knees, walk your fingers down your legs. Let yourself hang, rock side to side. And then if you can, straighten your legs a little bit. Release the back of the legs. And then take a little bend in your knees to help release your lower back and let yourself hang even deeper. And then start to roll your way up to stand and we're gonna make our way down onto our backs for our last work. We have core. So our three core exercises of the day are one, straight leg bicycle, 
two, dead bug. And three, toe touches. So my legs are straight the whole time. I'm getting a hamstring stretch while I'm doing my core work, okay? So first 30 seconds, straight leg bicycles, hands behind the head, side to side. And you get to pick your pace here. You can go super fast if that's what your body's needing, or you can work through it slowly, actively pressing your heels away from the body as you find contact between elbow and knee, really crunching into the core. Yeah. All right. Last 10. In five, we're going to come into dead bugs. We have four, three, two. Arms are up, legs are up. We're dropping alternate limbs in alternate directions. If your neck gets tired, release it down onto the floor. Otherwise, keep the head up, look in towards your belly button. And the rule here is that every vertebrae in your spine has to stay rooted into the floor the entire time you're doing this. So if your back starts to arch, you're taxing your back, you're not working your core, so press your back into the floor. Last eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Toe touches, last one, up, up, up. Get those fingers to toe. We're firing up the upper abs here. The lower abs are working because our legs are lifted. Let's bring it home. We are half done. Reach, reach. Ooh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Knees into the chest. Drop both knees over to the left. Release the spine. Bring both knees over to the right. And then bring your knees back through center. Grab the backs of both legs and start to work the legs up and down. Work them towards straight and bend them. Active hamstring stretches. Let your shoulders relax here. The legs are doing the work. And then go ahead and pull the knees in towards the chest. Rotate them out so your knees are pulled in towards your armpits and give yourself a rock side to side. If you want a deeper stretch, reach through your knees, grab the outer edges of your feet, happy baby. And whichever position you're in, keep pulling your knees in towards your armpits to help open up the hips. We wanna try and keep the back of the head on the floor. And then bring the knees back through the center. Rock and roll two or three times up and down along the side. And come on up to sit. Send the legs out into a V shape. Give them a wiggle. Take your hands across your chest. With a straight spine, lift up. And then if you can, hinge and come back up. And hinge and back up. And three more. Last two. This time we hinge and hold for five, four, three, two, and release. Pedal the legs out. Reach the arms up. Hook your thumbs. Big stretch over to the right. Big stretch over to the left. Release your hands, give yourself a round overhead. Good job. And I'll let Steve take it from here. Nice work, everyone, as always. Great job, everybody. Uh, if there's no questions, we're gonna see you tomorrow, same time. Awesome. Thank you. Good job, Thank you. Good job guys. Boston Strong, John Doolittle. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Bye. Thanks, Laurel. Awesome.